Before Hideki Matsuyama emerged as the face of Japanese golf, Ryo Ishikawa, aka the Bashful Prince, was primed to be that rising sun. With several wins on the Japan Tour before even turning 20, he was well on his way. However, after transitioning to the PGA Tour in the US, success did not translate as easily. Greetings y'all, it's your knock Peter Mata, and today we're going to get into Whatever Happened to Ryo Ishikawa. Son of Katsumi and Yukiko Ishikawa, Ryo was born in Satama, Japan. Though golf growth in Japan was stagnant during that time in the 90s, Ryo's dad was an avid golfer and was the one who got Ryo started in the game at the real age of 6. From there, Ryo developed quickly into a phenom. He won several times as a junior golfer and even competed all around the world at junior tournaments at Bay Hill and at the Callaway Junior World Championship at Torrey Pines. By the time he reached high school, he became a national sensation. As an amateur, at the age of 15 years 8 months, and in his tour debut no less, Ryo became the youngest winner in Japan Tour history by winning by one shot at the 2007 Munsingwear Open KSB Cup. This accomplishment quickly brought great attention to Ryo and shot him into Japanese stardom. He got praise from Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, his galleries ballooned to the thousands, and calls came for him to turn pro as endorsement deals flooded to his feet. This was also around the time when his famous nickname was bestowed upon him. They called him Hanikami Oji, which as mentioned, translates to Bashful Prince. It was given to him because of his shy smile, polite demeanor, and colorful personality. While Ryo originally leaned toward graduating high school before going pro, he ultimately decided to turn professional in January of 2008 at the ripe old age of 16. And at that point when he turned pro, he essentially became an instant multimillionaire as he signed several endorsement deals with a variety of companies. With officially moving up to the next level, Ryo's game continued to develop nicely. He captured his second Japan Tour win in late 2008, and by the close of that year, at the age of 17, he became the youngest player ever to reach the top 100 of the official World Golf rankings. With his play seemingly backing up his style, the hype began to reach outside of Japan as many in the U.S. began to take notice. In 2009, Rio got his first chance at playing on the PGA Tour and in majors. Early in the year, he received sponsor exemptions at three PGA Tour events, including the Northern Trust Open, the Transitions Championship, and the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Additionally, just to show how big he was then, he also got a special invitation to play that year's Masters. Hello, America. I'm Ryo Ishikawa from Japan. Unfortunately, in those four starts, his game didn't live up to the hype as he only made the cut at the Transitions Championship where he finished 71st overall. While these finishes were disappointing, Ryo's return to the Japan Tour later that summer brought about more fruitful results as he won four times on that tour that year. With those wins, it earned him a top spot on that tour's money list, and it also earned him a spot inside the top 50 in the official World Golf rankings, which again made him the youngest ever to crack that mark. These accomplishments also helped qualify him for more majors and PGA Tour events, as well as earn him a spot on the 2009 International President's Cup team, where once again, he was the youngest participant in the event's history. In that event, while the internationals ended up losing to the US, Rio had a decent debut showing with a 3, 2, and 0 record. In 2010, his success on the Japan Tour continued and he also got to play in 10 PGA Tour events. On the Japan Tour, he won 3 more times and in one of those wins, he became the first player on any major tour to shoot a 58, which is just ridiculous. Again though, while results on the Japan Tour were outstanding, his results on the PGA Tour were a bit pedestrian in comparison. Now, he was at one point tied for second at the US Open, 
but mainly looking into his final results. He only made 6 cuts and earned only 1 top 10, which actually was at the WGC Accenture match play. And this pattern pretty much continued for Rio in the following years. Now 2011 was a tough year for Rio and really all of Japan. If you remember early in the year, Japan was struck by the most powerful earthquake and subsequent tsunami it's ever seen. To help, Rio did pledge to donate all his golf earnings to the relief effort. And while his golfing year continued on the Japan Tour and the PGA Tour, the disaster left it hard for Rio to focus. Now, he still made the President's Cup team and had several high finishes, including a somewhat close chance at winning on the PGA Tour at the WGC Bridgestone Invitational. But for the first time in his career, he didn't record a win that year. In 2012, Rio bounced back as he played significantly more in the PGA Tour. He again came very close to capturing his first PGA Tour win with his runner-up at the Puerto Rico Open. While he didn't get the win there, the finish did help give him special temporary membership. And before ending the year, he did get back to his winning ways as he broke a two-year drought and captured his 10th Japan Tour win in November of that year. With essentially full membership access to the PGA Tour, Rio decided to play primarily there in the US for the 2013 season. The results again though, were not exactly stellar. In 23 starts, he made only 13 cuts and recorded only one top 10. Overall, he finished 141st in the FedEx Cup rankings, and as a result, he had to go to the Web.com Tour Finals to try to regain his status. And to his credit, Rio did just that. With the help of three straight top 10s to finish the Web.com Tour Finals off, he earned his PGA Tour card back for the 2014 season. With a little bit of momentum from those finals, Rio did build on it with technically his best PGA Tour season. He didn't capture any wins, but he did get another runner-up at the Shriners Hospital for Children's Open. And he also had a couple more top 10s and six other top 25s. Overall, he finished 72nd in the FedEx Cup, and he did add another win on the Japan Tour. So this was an encouraging season for at the time still a young 24 year old player. It looked like maybe he found a rhythm in the US that he could build from. However, in the years since then, it's been more of the same for Rio, which I have to say isn't necessarily a terrible thing because he's actually had a pretty decent career and it hasn't been awful at all. Of course though, we have to consider the expectations put on him as well as his direct Japanese competition in Hideki Matsuyama, who around that time was starting to blossom as well. So in this next part of the video, let's get into where Rio has been in the past few years and try to give a little more context as to exactly why his game never translated outside of Japan. So as far as his 2015 and 2016 seasons on the Japan Tour, Rio again had great years there as he captured three more wins in that time span. It's especially impressive considering he only played a handful of times there in those years. Also again though, his PGA Tour results were pedestrian. In 2015, with only a couple top 10s, he barely made the FedEx Cup playoffs by finishing 122nd. And in 2016, Rio unfortunately was sidelined for months with a back injury, which was something that had been lingering for a while. Some have mentioned it being one of the reasons his game hasn't translated, as he was dealing with some lower back issues just before the 2013 season as well. And I somewhat agree, injuries definitely do hurt, especially when you're young and just trying to get your career going, like Rio was then. It can stun some of the development and hurt the confidence. Specifically for Rio, it hurt his swing as his movements were more restricted, and it showed in the stats as his strokes gained driving, continually got worse from that year. And for a guy who was never a long palmer, he didn't particularly hit it straight either, but we'll get more into this in a bit later. Moving on to Rio's 2017, where he played mainly on the PGA Tour through a major medical exemption. Unfortunately, he didn't capitalize on this exemption, as he had a similar season to his 2013 campaign, 
This time though, he finished 148th in the FedEx Cup rankings. Only this time around, when he went to the Web.com Tour Finals, he was not able to retain his PGA Tour card for the 2018 season. Thus, he returned to Japan, and has been playing mostly on the Japan Tour since then. On that tour in 2018, he didn't capture any wins, but he did still record several high finishes. It was in 2019 where he had more of a comeback year. That year, he got back to his winning ways, as he captured three wins on the Japan Tour. This success then helped him get back into the top 100 of the official World Golf rankings, which earned him a spot back into majors and some PGA Tour events including the inaugural Zozo Championship, Japan's first PGA Tour event. Unfortunately, this again did not bring much change to his results in the US and on the PGA Tour. In 12 events in the past couple years, he missed more cuts than he made, and his best finish was only a tied 51st. Overall, he has also cooled off since 2019, as he hasn't won on any tour since then, and he's missed out on opportunities to compete in big time events in Japan. Rio was really pushing to make the 2020 Olympics, but unfortunately he didn't qualify, and he just missed the most recent 2021 Zozo Championship that has returned to Japan. The reason being was that he was actually trying to qualify for the Corn Ferry Tour through Q School. While he got to the second stage, he ended up finishing tied 35th and subsequently didn't qualify. So he clearly was trying to get back to playing primarily on the PGA Tour, and since he didn't get through to the Corn Ferry Tour this year, he'll most likely go back to the Japan Tour and try to make it through that way again, which we've seen that he's capable of doing it. And I want to reiterate that Rio's career has not been some kind of complete failure. I mean, he's barely just turned 30 and already has 17 Japan Tour wins and he's still one of the biggest draws for Japanese fans. So he's already accomplished a decent bit and he's still young enough to add on to it. And sure, he hasn't won outside of Japan, but it's also not like his game completely left him or that he got burned out from playing which makes this case a little more interesting. It makes it really just come down to that question of why doesn't his game travel well? Well, in my opinion, it's a combination of things. As said, Rio was never the longest hitter, and it definitely hurt that he wasn't particularly accurate either. That type of driving he could get away with on the Japan Tour, but on the PGA Tour not so much because of the courses they play and his competition. Rio himself admitted this difference. Here's what he said about his first impressions of the PGA Tour. Quote, I was just really shocked to see how everyone was hitting it so long and so straight. The players who were longer than me were also straighter than me. That sent me on a downward spiral with the driver. So because of that, it made him stretch his game more than he wanted to. His strengths were always good iron play and streaky putting which judging from his PGA Tour stats, were seemingly affected because of his poor driving as well. Also mentioned earlier were the injuries. 2016 specifically was a wash because of his back troubles that year, and it seems to have been a lingering issue even since earlier in his career. So yeah, injuries played a factor and never help anyone's career. It kills the momentum when you have to focus more on recovery instead of improving your skills and keeping your rhythm. The last thing I'll mention is that the culture and language barrier probably had a factor in it as well. Granted, yes, Hideki Matsuyama has been through all the same hype and experience and has succeeded, but everyone is different, and specifically Hideki and Ryo are different in game and in personality. You know, Hideki's a very private guy, while Ryo seems to not mind mixing it up with people. This is not to say that either way is a wrong or right way, because actually I think Rio handled himself well since the beginning, which is impressive considering he had all this hype since he was 15 years old. But it can't be denied that it's tough to adjust and get fully comfortable when you try to go somewhere where the culture and language is so different. I mean, that's a challenge that goes outside of just golfers. And it seems like Rio just hasn't quite found the formula that works for him like Hideki has. 
And I'm sure while Rio is proud of his fellow countrymen, as a natural competitor, I'm also sure he has some of those feelings of that should have been me. Like I said in my Mateo Manacero video, Rio was supposed to be with Mateo and Rory McIlroy as the stars of the next generation of players after Tiger. Alas, that hasn't been the case. But yeah, hopefully y'all enjoyed the video. These were just some of my thoughts on Rio. I will say there was some hesitation to do this video because Rio is still certainly young enough to add on to his legacy. And I for one hope he does. I'm a fan of his and think it would be good for the game. Anyways, let me know your thoughts. What do you think ever happened to Ryo Ishikawa? Why do you think his game has yet to translate outside of Japan? Thanks again for watching y'all, and as always, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Your words mean something to me.